Hi guys, Darren from Van Fluid Art. Thank you for joining us today on the Fluid Art Express. Um, up before me, you would have had Taslima from Taslima Maya Art. After me, you're going to have Christy from Creations by Christy. Shannon from Shambi Fluid Art. Bubbles from Venom Fluid Art. Our special guest this week, Simona from Simona Fluid Art. And then after Simona, we have Tony from Hippy Dippy Painter Man. So stay on board and enjoy the ride. So what I decided to do this week was have a little bit of fun and do like a beginner type one that goes from mild to wild. Okay, so when you're first starting out with your paint pouring, the easiest way for a beginner is to grab a couple of tiles like these. This is just a old hexagonal tile that's been poured on a hundred times. And we can come up with some really cool stuff. So what I'll do is grab some like deco art little bottles of tube paint, well bottle paint, flow paint, whatever you want to call it. I've got a couple of different colors here just to have a play with. And these are great to practice with. So if you're doing little coasters and things like that when you're just first starting out, you don't have to go to the expense of expensive pigments, Australian flow troll, um, all the fancy paints and things that go along with it. So what we'll do is we'll start with some basic stuff and then work our way up to the wild stuff with all the expensive stuff. So I'm not even going to put pillow paint down on this. I'm just going to use whatever paint is in these little tubes, bottles, whatever. And we're just going to come up with some crazy patterns. Okay, so... That's a metallic blue. Naturally, doing it this way, you're going to use a fair bit of paint. You're better off to put a pillow paint down. Now, you can either mix up some tube paint or whatever with a bit of water and go from there. Or if you're feeling ambitious, you can just use whatever paint is in these bottles. That one's quite thick because I really don't use these things anymore. A bit more red on there. A bit more green. Maybe a bit more blue. Alright. So all we've done is put a whole heap of paint down. Grab a skewer. And just make a trippy pattern through it. Alright. Grab the spinner. And just give it a spin. Now this isn't going to flow real well because there is no pillow paint for it to slide across and all the rest of it. But, it gets you started on just seeing how paint moves, etc, etc. So, that purple that was really thick has a big lumpy bit in it. Nice job, Wombat. You didn't check it first. But you can just go through and scribble patterns through it and things like that. Now, if you don't have a spinner, you can always tilt it and stretch it out that way. So, you can start to make crazy little patterns. Where's the camera? There. And that's just basic, straight out of the bottle. Nothing's added. Just for a bit of fun. That way you can get to see how different designs you put down make a difference to your end results. 
So what we're going to do now is do the same sort of thing but with a pillow paint. So I'm going to scrape that off. As best as I can. Now, next step, you'd go up to using a pillow paint, which is just um, interior walls house paint. You don't want the ceiling paint because that's really chalky and tends to crack, whereas the stuff for the walls is a whole heap better. All right, so we can add some pillow paint down first. Grab our little tubes of paint. Maybe put some lines through it. Grab some of this green. Grab the red. Oops. All good. Then just grab your skewer again. Run some lines through it. That. Now you'll notice with the pillow paint, you can really move it around a lot better. So if you don't have a spinner, you can just tilt and stretch it. And if you do have a spinner, I recommend investing in one because you can get them pretty cheap. You know, Amazon have them for like 20 bucks. This one's a glass spinner with a single bearing in it. And it's super smooth, super quiet, and loads of um, fun. So then you can go in, add little bits here and there, just to change your pattern up or whatever. And then you'll get crazy things like that. You know, so you can do these coasters really cheap. Now, what we'll do is step up another notch and we'll go with some um, untinted house paint that has tube paints mixed in with it. Now, if you want to see how that's done, I'll put the video link up on the screen now. Watch that. It shows you exactly how I mix my tube paints, pigments, etc. with untinted house paint. So what we'll do is ditch this one. We'll grab another coaster. So, we'll grab some nice tube paint. I'll move these, actually. Otherwise, I'm going to get paint all over them worse than I already have. Okay. Tube paint. So, what I do is I mix mine up and then put them in little containers. That way they're all mixed up and they last, you know, if it's an airtight container, they'll last, you know, a couple of months before they thicken right up. You can always add a little bit more water to it and it will thin out. So this here is a yellow by Pebio, which is tube paint. Mixed with untended house paint I have a 
neon pink here somewhere which is a Liquitex but still all tube paints And what else should we use? Okay, we have a red violet. That's actually a Matisse. So now you're getting up into the more expensive type tube paints. Cheaper tube paints still work. They're not too bad. Um, cheaper tube paints tend to fade a lot quicker than more expensive ones. Also, more expensive tube paints are highly pigmented. So, you don't need as much of the tube paint to mix in with your pouring medium to make it stretch out that far. Alright, once again, you just grab your skewer. Make some trippy patterns through it. Like that. Give it a bit of a spin. So you get some really crazy patterns and designs. Now you'll notice with that one, the more expensive tube paint is a lot more vibrant compared to the previous one, which I'll just grab here. Hang on, I'll put that there for a second. Need two hands. Nice job, Wombat. All right. So that was with the deco art. That one there is mixed in tube paints with a pourer medium. So you'll notice the colors are a lot more vibrant compared to that one. So put this to one side. Now we'll step things up another notch and go with a cell activator this time. So we're going to use our same basic tile. Add the same pillow paint down we just used. step up into some pigments and some cell activator all right so this is a red by eye candy very very nice pigments and really cost effective too so, if you want any of those, I have a link in the description for a discount code, 10% off. Feel free to use it at your will. Okay, what shall we use? We'll use some Black Diamond, which is another really great pigment. So these are all pigments. Like I said before, if you want to see how they're all mixed, check out the video link that I put up there. 
Now this one's a neon green, which is still a pigment. And what else shall we use? We'll go with a tube paint pink, which is actually Liquitex. But I've mixed some interference pigments in with it. All right, we'll start with that. We'll grab some cell activator which is Amsterdam Lamp Black, mixed with Australian Floetrol. We will grab a little swipe tool, like that. I'm gonna put some cell activator on it. Now what we're gonna do is give it a swipe. that now you're gonna see a whole heap of cells appear like so what we're gonna do is do the same thing grab the skewer put the same pattern through it and we'll give that a spin Spinner definitely comes in handy, and for the price of it, they're a bargain, so definitely worth investing in. All right, let's pop that one up. And then you end up with some really cool patterns and designs through it. So, as you can see, when you're very first starting out, just grab some little tiles. They're cheap enough. I mean, over here in Australia, they're a bit of a rip-off. Um, they're like a dollar each at Bunnings. If you go to a tile store, you can get them a lot cheaper. Buy them bulk, like buy a whole box at a time of 100. Over in the States, I know they're quite cheap. So... That way you don't use very much paint for when you're just learning and practicing and trying different designs and patterns. Now not only are these good for um, coasters and things like that, they're great for trying out different color palettes for when you'd wanna do a bigger piece. So you can practice different layering of your colors to see what results you get, different way you swipe the skewer through to give certain patterns. If you practice on the smaller stuff, you get to see what it looks like before you change that up to a bigger one. It'll still look quite similar. So great for practicing that way. So we'll move that off to one side. I think we'll do one more, shall we? So once you've stepped up to house paints, untinted paints, pigments, all your little micas, things like that, your expensive tube paints, it is going to cost you a lot more in the long run, but your results are a lot nicer, and It'll actually save you money in the long run because you don't need anywhere near as much tube paint to poor and medium ratios. Quality paint works really, really well. So what we'll do is do a bloom. Let's 
So these are micas, pigments. Stick it down on the house paint. Now when you're using pigments and things like that and you've got them mixed up in house paint, make sure you give them a good stir like that because you're going to get it all separate and sit on the bottom of your cup. So once you start mixing it back in, you're good to go. You'll notice if you haven't used your colours in a couple of days, when you stir it, there's a lot of stuff sitting on the bottom still. So just keep that in mind when you go to pigments, micas. Alright, add some of this, just in little places here and there. Now I'm just picking random colours out of my pile here. This one's a tube paint. So you can mix and match tube paints with your pigments. That's no big deal. It actually works a lot better if you do. Tube paints tend to hold their structure really well and help your micas at the same time. Alright, that'll do. Next tool we are going to use is the world's smallest blower. Which is this little guy. Now he's had a, a really hard life as you can see. The side cover's missing. It's been dropped a hundred times. Ripped out of it a few times. So It still comes back for more. Now that runs off a USB um, power source. It's not the battery powered one. Battery powered one is okay, but just doesn't have the grunt. And as the batteries start to wear down, you don't have the air pressure that comes out of it. That's real good. So you're better off with a USB one. Um, if you're in Australia, what I use for mine is a USB charger from Ryobi that is strapped to an 18 volt power tool battery. So it still only puts out your five volts, but the amperage is quite high compared to say a phone charger that's only a couple of amps. So it tends to give it a bit more grunt. All right, let's blow this blue out, shall we? Grab some cell activator. Now, if you're blowing it out by mouth, you don't need as much cell activator for it to spread out as far. I found with the mini blower, if you put a bit more cell activator on, they end up looking a bit better, so. Turn that on. Just blow down. Fluff the cell activator out. And just blow it across the colours. Like that. See? There you go. Dropped it again. <laughs> nice job, Wombat. Still works. It's all good. Alright. So. Scrape some of this paint off here. 
So once you've practiced and practiced, you can start getting stuff like that. So you can still do that with tube paints. You don't have to go to the expense of pigments and micas and all the other stuff. But it does give you a lot of really cool patterns, heaps of shimmer and shine in it. Colours are more vibrant and last a whole heap longer in the long run. Then you get stuff like that. Wipe my hands. So, coasters are really cool for practicing, learning, um, things like that. You know, you can resin these and sell them. Now, I'll pop up a link of how I resin these things on the screen, what video number it is, and the video number for how I put the cork backing on the back of them, if you're going to use them as coasters. So watch those, and that'll explain a whole heap for beginners that are just starting out and want to make up some coasters for family and friends, or a little sideline thing that they're doing. So... Just remember, once you start resining these things, it does get a bit more expensive because you're going to need a respirator, safety glasses, rubber gloves. Protect yourself because resin can be nasty stuff. So, all right. If you've got any questions, just drop them in the comments and I'll get back to them as soon as possible. Um... If you like that video, click like, share, and subscribe. Ring the notification bell. That way you get to see all my videos as I release them. Up next, we've got Christy from Creations by Christy. So click on the link I'm putting in the live chat or in the title of this video, and it'll take you to it. Um, if you've been in my group, you'd have been able to just press the um, playlist link which plays everybody on the Fluid Art Express today, one after another. That's the easiest way, and you don't get lost. All right, guys, thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate it. Um, don't forget, Simona's Fluid Art is our special guest this week, so please drop on by, show us some love. And that's it from me. So you guys have fun, take care. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.